Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Harrogate series. Harrogate is a large borough, one of the 11 districts of North Yorkshire. It's got 139 civil parishes. Which one are we in in this episode? Welcome back to Harrogate once again, people. Today we are two miles away from the town of Borough Bridge, and I've been excited to put this one on the map for you. This is a lovely village, and even just looking at it on Google Maps, I just knew it was gonna be one of the best I've ever covered so far here in this part of Yorkshire. This one is also where you'll find the home of Reed Bordle, the uh, logistics company who we've mentioned before in the Copgrove episode a few months ago now. This is Rowcliffe. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like, and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Rowcliffe, Redcliffe. This week in Harrogate, we continue to make our way along the River Ure. Welcome to the gorgeous village of Rowcliffe, literally Red Cliff, which is located on the edge of Borough Bridge. It lies close to the A1 and it's centred on a village green which doubles up as a school playing field. Although tiny, Rowcliffe Parish extends for quite a distance in all directions, but most notably towards the A1, where a massive industrial estate provides logistics company Reed Bordle with their HQ. There are some awesome landmarks in this one. St Mary's Church is its main attraction. It's believed to be the only church in the country with an entirely vaulted roof. Then there's the school which dominates the village centre, and you can't really miss it. It's got a spire that's taller than the church. Rowcliffe often attracts tourists. You can stay here thanks to a couple of caravan parks around its edge, but you may also be tempted by the pub. Named the Crown Inn, it has a 16th century theme and offers five-star accommodation. And lots of people do stay here because close to Rowcliffe are the Yorkshire Dales, known for their spectacular scenery. Others prefer to take on the Rowcliffe Ramble, a short, circular walk that incorporates Westwick Lock. In all, it's not a bad place to come and explore, so let's go and do just that. Welcome to Rowcliffe. This is effectively a linear settlement, but it has a wide central span, defined by the village green. We start our walk on a narrow street that runs around the southern edge of the green. You're not allowed to park on the road here, or the grass, but there are designated parking spaces. This is the green, the focal point of this stunningly beautiful village, and it's one of the most unique we've ever come across. We'll discuss why in a moment. And the reason you can't park on it or near it is simple. This is a bus route served by the number 21 to Nesborough. We're making our way around the green in an anti-clockwise fashion. All the landmarks here are based around it, with the exception of the school, which is on it. This house is up first. It's an old primitive Methodist chapel, which was built in 1835. Interestingly, its upper floor is lit entirely by roof windows only. Next we have the school, Rowcliffe C of E, which regularly gets outstanding Ofsted reports and it's becoming more popular every year. The village green doubles as the school's sports field. Dogs are banned from it for health and safety reasons, but it's still a great place for children of the village to play. 
Outside the church is a board which tells you about the Rowcliffe Ramble, a circular walk that starts at the church and follows the River Year. Just walking around the village is a good ramble in itself. It's even won awards. This sign tells us it once won the title of Best Kept Village in the Lower Dales. Let's get the parish marked off by the way. We can do that here too by leaving a card on the notice board. I'm hoping the 10 people who live in Westwick see this too, because that of course was too small to have one. Before us now are the gates of St Mary's Church, so let's go in for a nosy. The church was built in 1843 for Andrew Lawson of Old Romana and was designed by the York architect R. H. Sharp. It's built of stone which came from quarries at Copgrove, Burton Leonard and Old Bramana, the latter of which was used by the Romans. The most notable feature here is the roof. The rare semicircular shape is known by architects as a wagon head vault, and it's believed to be the only church roof in the country of its type. Although there is a regular service here, St Mary's was declared redundant in 1983 and is now in the hands of the Church's Conservation Trust. Next to the church is the old vicarage which was built in 1854. Attached to it is the vestry, purpose built in 2005 as a holiday home. Outside on the road is a phone box, now a book exchange, and a wall mounted post box. Rowcliffe has no post office, but that's not surprising. In times past not much work was available for such a small undeveloped area. Males tended to work in agriculture, whilst females worked in domestic service. The situation hasn't really changed over the last 150 years, and so Rowcliffe remains short of basic services such as a shop. Borough Bridge provides access to those. The village does have a pub though. This is The Crown, a 16th century coaching inn which offers five star accommodation. It's had some rough times of late. It went into voluntary liquidation in 2019, but it's now been refurbished by the Coastal and Country Inns Group. If staying in the pub accommodation isn't for you, you could always buy one of the park homes that's behind it. Owned by Turner Parks, Rowcliffe Park has 22 plots designed with those aged 50 or over in mind. And all of this can be easily reached by bicycle. Rowcliffe lies on Sustrans Route 688 and the National Byway. Awesome. Okay, so that's Rowcliffe Village. It's all around that central village green and it is beautiful. However, we are not done with this episode yet by a long chalk. You see, Rowcliffe Parish is much bigger than the village itself. And out to the east, there's a big industrial estate. And that is where Reed Bordel are based. Now we're going to go for a long walk down a footpath which will take us towards it. Well, at least that was the plan. You can see here, this, uh, this house here has got a public footpath way marker just there. So I went through the gate, past that car you can see there, to another gate through that, and then it just comes to an end. The, uh, the footpath just stops and there's a fence there and a, and a hedge. So that footpath obviously doesn't exist anymore, or at least if it does, it's not clearly way marked. This is a bit of a problem because that path would have taken me to Reed Bordle. There's only one other way to do it, and that's in the car, um, but I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to be able to get now because from the road you can't really see anything. We'll see what happens. It wasn't just Reed Bordle that the footpath would have led to. You see, the industrial estate also has a few other hidden secrets which I was hoping to uncover. One of them lies close to this road. This is Brickyard Road, and just to the west is a second street named Claypit Lane. By now, the long-time viewers should all be able to work out what was once here. Yep, this was a brickworks. The only remaining evidence of the brickworks comes in the form of a disused clay pit, which has now been filled with water and turned into a private nature reserve. Had the footpath been accessible, this is what it would have passed first, running around the edge of the lake behind these buildings before passing along the edge of Reed Bordle's warehouses. It's clearly marked on many maps, so there must be another way to get to it. I, though, have no idea how to do it. In any event, the fact I had to drive this meant I could show you a bit more of the industrial area. This is Bar Lane, which runs to a roundabout near the A1 before entering Borough Bridge. Whilst it's greatly industrial on its southern side, to the north there's actually another campsite, Borough Bridge Camping and Caravanning. The next street up is called Becklands Close, and again it's full of small businesses. I'd like to draw your attention though to the large white warehouses that tower over this dead end. They all belong to Reed Bordle. 
The company specialise in temperature controlled distribution. Their site here in Rowcliffe is the second largest cold storage facility in the UK. They began life in 1977 as Allerton Cold Storage Limited, co-founded by Mike Stewart, Keith Reed and Guy Reed, the latter of whom lived at Copgrove Hall. The company was originally based in North Allerton. They went on to buy general haulage firm Wilson's Transport, who already had a site in Borough Bridge and land for expansion. Subsequently, the two businesses merged. In 1992, the business became Reed Bordle and Keith Reed helped design their first cold store. Now it's one of the leading names in frozen logistics services, and being so close to the A1 is a major advantage. To finish with, we need to talk about the A1 actually. After passing under a bridge beyond Reed Bordle and turning left at a roundabout, you find yourself on the A168, which runs for a while parallel to the A1. Both roads cross the River Ure just north of Rowcliffe. Where the A1 crosses the Ure, there's a bit of Roman history. Excavations in 1993 uncovered two first century Roman forts at that crossing point. They were never major settlements though, and it's believed they were short lived and abandoned in favour of Oldborough, one mile to the east. How could the Romans abandon such a lovely bit of Yorkshire? How very dare they? I can only assume Oldborough must be much better, but we'll see when we get there. We're staying with the River Ure for the time being though. Come back next week when we'll be seeing another village that sits on its banks. See you later. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.